different from what uh, we often keep quoting Seattle Chief and all that. Uh, um, for me, this is equally important that this is what people hold. Um, how we started this Evolving Sustainable Livelihood Institute, I just quickly want to say it started as a dialogue. Much of the effort was in sustaining a dialogue with SRLM. Since yesterday, a lot of have, people have spoken about working with SRLM and the challenges of working with SRLM. One of the things that we have learned is one of the things you need to do is to sustain a dialogue. Whether they are favorable, they are not favorable, whether they are understanding, not understanding, whether they make you wait for three days to give you a five minute uh, schedule. I mean, I'm talking about the not so uh, attractive part of the engagement. But that is it. The second part I talk about, I always mention this in our oral meetings, is the Satyagraha of overwork as against Gandhiji's Satyagraha of non-work. Don't just give a suggestion for action or for a decision. Also write the paper that will go with the solution. Because most often they're not, what we have realized with SRLM is people don't have opportunity, time, or often the person who's asked to write the paper has got the competence or the understanding to write the paper. So we don't leave anything to chance. We write our side of the paper, we write their side of the paper also, give it to them and ask them to sign it. <laughs> no, I mean it seriously. This I have been practicing and I call it Satyagraha of work. You know? It, because it is something for which you will never be acknowledged, but it's okay. Because one of the things is, it is not about co-opting, it is about getting work done. Simple. The other thing that we do is insist on process. Because we have suffered, like all of you have, I'm sure, with changing people. And Tamil Nadu people change very often. It's done because most often they're not with people with that kind of a large vision. What gets lost often is the detailing part gets lost. So we ensure that there is a detailing that is done. Uh, specifics with SRLM is to retain trust, continuous engagement and dialogue, and deepen and widen. Uh, one of the things that I have found in dealing with uh, SRLM officials, and this came to me very strikingly by one APO at the field after a, a workshop, he said, you know what happens with us? We get a government job one fine day, we come in, and everybody else around us assumes we have all the knowledge required for us to do what we are doing. And because we don't know, we start pretending. And eventually, all the actions we have done based upon our pretensions become something that we have to defend for our career. And that becomes us and nobody ever taught us what to do. So primarily this focus that the Tamil Nadu government brought out saying focus on our staff first even before you move to the community, because our staff don't have any uh, idea. So the first year they are set, apart from working with the CPs and CRPs, work with the APOs, the APMs, the people at the Puduvalu's uh, functional level who are directly, these are the front end people who are dealing with the community. Work with them, build those capacities in them. And we have taken it very seriously, we, that is what we are working with them. And the second thing I find interesting is, not much analysis happens at that level. <coughs> Most often they are not. A point of data aggregation is also the point of accountability, unfortunately, in our system. So because they aggregate data, they do not uh, analyze it. You know, they, they aggregate it and they have just enough time to pass it to the next level. So we make them analyze it. We provide them tools and simple things, ways of understanding and modifying their own action steps based upon the lowest level of analysis, that is so easily possible. Because they think, I sent a report and I am done. You know, I have to pass, yes. one more slide, then I am done. Um, course negotiation, yeah, one of the things that I wanted to mention was on the course part, what we have done is hands-on learning space. We have insisted that it is not enough for them to understand this livelihood from a different angle. They also have to go and practice some of them. Second thing we are uh, insisting on is a reflective space. We have designed several spaces. I can talk about it in detail, maybe have a different presentation, but uh, how reflection is important at that level, because most often they're not, that is not insisted on. But yesterday also somebody mentioned about it. So that is part of our, mechanism, our method of teaching that we insist on that. And pay attention to the subjective as well as the objective. It's not enough to 
have the right tools, right processes to be uh, delivered, it is also important how the place looks, whether they had a good breakfast, whether it is a beautiful space in which you are doing this learning opportunity. So these are smaller details of subjective nature which we have placed enormous amount of emphasis on as much as objective part and courses are all in local language with enormous emphasis on local knowledge. We keep repeatedly bringing it back. Joss uh, spoke about it and I just started with a quote from a local leader primarily because uh, one of the things we have found very successful in my own understanding with my students what I have found successful is there is a lot of pride in discovering that which you think is a solution was at least in some stage there were some seeds of it somewhere in your own community. Uh, your beneficiaries already have it. So to work from there onwards is much more easier rather than uh, somebody said yesterday, para, para dropping a solution into a community. So this we have always insisted on. For that language for us is very critical also. This is a program we have just designed, Stewardship for Sustainable Livelihood, which is custom designed for the APOs and APMs. Uh, continuous learning, uh, I mentioned about the details. And the database, we maintain probably one of the largest databases on the rural livelihood. In fact, uh, the student work that was done about all the states, I keep showing it to them, they don't have it. The challenges of this, I, all of you know, you have all said it since yesterday, I didn't go too much into depth. But what we see and the promise that we have noticed is uh, inspiration works. You know, in Oroville when they come, what they find is a lot of inspiration. And inspiration as a tool I think is critical at some level for people to take initiatives through it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ram.